In this third and last clip, you'll learn how to make a square shaped mend using the blanket stitch anchored to a warp thread across and underneath each row of stitches. This sock has only one small hole in it, but it's really a crucial one since it will definitely rip up the knit if nothing is done to stop it from unraveling. Push the darning mushroom into the sock and secure in place with the string. Thread your needle with a colorful yarn, in this case a light pink that contrasts to the color of the sock. Make a plan for where you want the mend to be. The stitch hangs loose so we'll secure it before we start mending. Push the needle into the sock at some distance from the hole and out to the front. Load running stitches onto the needle as many as you can fit. Sew towards the loose stitch, catch it onto the needle and sew through it to secure it to the thread and sew down diagonally towards the imagined corner to the left. Start sewing a row of running stitches in a square around the hole. In this case, you do this to know where the edges of the mend will start and end. Push the needle into the knit, pull through and repeat until you reach a corner. Take a new angle and continue sewing to the next corner. As I said, load running stitches onto the needle, as many as you can fit. It's easier if you do it in a row with many stitches to sew. The mend on this sock will be about four times four centimeters. When you reach the same corner you started from, in this case the left lower one, start sewing blanket stitches across to the right edge of the mend in a straight line. Slide the needle sideways to the right, needle pointing upwards, and push the needle into the knit and out above the stitch. Wrap the yarn under the needle to form a loop and pull the yarn all the way through. Tighten the stitch between every new loop. Tighten the stitch. If you are left-handed, you'll probably choose to sew stitches from the right edge to the left since it's usually easier to sew away from yourself, not towards you. But this isn't any rule. You can sew in which direction you choose to. The darner in this video is right-handed. She sews and darns from the left to the right. When you've sewn all across to the right side edge, attach a stitch at the edge and pull a crossing thread over the mend and onto the left side. Attach the yarn to the left edge and start sewing into both the first row of every blanket stitch and the crossing yarn, being careful not to sew into the knit. The reason for not sewing into the knit is obvious. If you do, you'll end up having an uneven mend because the knit is thicker than the sewn stitches and therefore would look very bulky. Repeat the rows of stitches and crossed lines of yarn until you run out of it. Sometimes one thread is enough. That's if the hole or the patch you want to make is small. This mend requires for a couple of threads since it's easier to sew with shorter threads rather than long ones. Long threads gets more tangled up and more often.
When you run out of yarn, push the needle in under the mend and out to the front above the mend. Actually, you can push out wherever you choose. Where you do is really up to you. Leave the remaining tail for weaving in later. Rethread and attach the new yarn where you made the last stitch before you ran out of it. The more colors you choose to darn with, the better. Remember that this is visible mending and you're allowed to play with different colors as much as you like. These days when we have so much of everything and the world is drowning in rejected clothes, garments and accessories, darned and mended clothes should be just as acceptable as new ones. Giving garments or pieces of clothing an extended life reduces the waste by only a little, but even small gestures make a reason. Earlier, before the revolution of textile industry, Traditions to mend and repair fulfilled our needs, but also offered a sense of beauty and of understanding for textiles and clothes and how to use them. Mending were a part of all places, cultures and families all over the world. We mended because we had to and because we believed we should. In more recent years, our relationship with mending has changed. And for us consumers, repairing, patching and rebuilding plays much smaller roles in our lives. In most cases, no role at all. Today, we so easily replace old with new only because it's so easy. The industry fostered us to believe that worn out clothes should be rejected and that it's unnecessary to save them. Fortunately, there are still those of us who love to mend repair and rebuild. Let's make a promise to teach our nearest and dearest that it's okay to wear mended clothes, garments and accessories. And more important, let's teach them how to mend their own clothes, if not for ourselves, but because the world needs it. Okay, so back to mending in this video. If you have large holes you want to mend and you want to use the blanket stitch on your mending, you'll probably run out of yarn a couple of more times than we do. So remember to always leave tails for weaving in. This is really important because if the yarn in the end or beginning is too short to thread onto any needle, you'll end up having a mend that won't hold for very long since the tails will hang loose. Repeat by sewing blanket stitches and crossing yarns across the whole mend. Finally, when you reach the upper running stitch row of your mend, you'll be darning into the blanket stitch, under the yarn across the row and the knit. This is for securing the stitches into the knit since it would otherwise hang loose. When you're done with the last row, 
push the needle into the edge of the mend and out through the sock, either above or beside the mend. Take out the mushroom and catch every yarn end and pull them through to the inside of the sock. Weave in the ends one by one by sewing into the backs of the stitches. There are different ways to weave in tails of yarn when you've finished working. Either sew into the backs of the mending stitches or into the side of the sock stitches. Remember to never ever make knots since they are very uncomfortable to walk on. Cut off the end of the yarn, steam the mend for a neat and flat finish and enjoy your visible mend and your colourful socks hopefully for many years to come. We used to say that the socks you have loved the most are the socks you will be mending. <laughs>